I think I saw talking about risk and risk management. I want to talk a little bit about this risk reward ratio. Now, it's known in the textbooks and everything as good practice to use uh, a risk reward ratio. What do I mean by that? It means that you should be risking one pound to make five or to make three. Actually, if that was five to one, that would be five, wouldn't it? So the idea is, hey, it's all very good. You put, you put $10 on, $20, $1,000, 10000 whatever it is. You expect to make three times your money or five times your money. That's the point. That's what people are saying when they talk about trading. However, what is not talked about is this thing here. The percentage chance the market is going to do what you want it to do. It's all very well saying, listen, here's my entry point here. Here's my risk of one unit. Here's my target of five units. I've got a five to one risk reward ratio. Aren't I a good trader? Well, yes, that kind of makes sense. But in the real world, that is only going to happen to you one out of five times because the chances of the market moving five times that direction versus one time in that direction, if you look at it from a purely neutral perspective, that's going to be a break even perspective. Uh, it's going to be a break even proposition because the extension of the move, if you had that 100 to 1, the chances of it going 100 units before it just does one against you, you're going to get that happening one out of 100 times. That is kind of where the market is and how it works. That's how options are priced. That's how if you look at binaries, they're all priced in that kind of manner. So this is all very well and good, but you have to take into account this. This is the key parameter to this whole game. It's all very well saying that, but you need to add this into it. Let's look at this because this is the key part of it. Let's get the, let's get the uh, cloth out here and let's start again. So the percentage chance the market will do X. If the market is sitting just here, the chance of it going up or down, generally speaking, is 50-50. Don't believe me, go and look at a binary price now. Chance of it going up in the next five minutes or down the next five minutes, 50-50, up on a day, down on a day from that, it's 50-50 minus their spread. That is generally the accepted understanding is how options are priced, it's how everything's priced, it's a 50-50 bet. However, as traders, that's no good for us, is it? Because we can see, well, hang on, if it's 50-50 all the time, I'm never gonna make money. If if this risk reward ratio means, you know, it's, it's it adjusts the percentage chance of me doing X to go up by five times, I'm only gonna get that one out of five times. So on a break-even perspective, that is pretty much as the market is. So how do we overcome that as traders? We overcome that as traders by being a little bit clever. We kind of say to ourselves, listen, if we can combine these two things, then we're in for a bit more of a profit, profitable existence as a trader than if we were just looking at these purely randomly. So what do I mean by that? Well, we need to say to ourselves, listen, we want to get involved at a point in the market where this isn't 50-50, or if it is 50-50, that is very, very high. Or if this is neutral, this is one to one, risk order one to one, that then becomes very, very high. You see, we're looking for 75% chance of doing what we want if it's one to one. Or we go, you know what, let's take a 10 to one, but it's only gonna do it 30% of the time. You know, without going too much into the maths, and I don't pretend to be, uh, you know, any, any maths professor here at all. Honestly, this is from a trading perspective. You can see that that will pay you off over time. 10 to one happens 30% of the time. If you're getting evens payout and it happens 75% of the time, you're going to make money. So we're looking for that, that scenario. You need to combine the two. So how do we find that scenario? That's the, probably the best question of the lot. So this is why as traders, we're always looking for a position in the market that is giving us the, the best possible chance. So let's say the market has come down here now. And we know the average range of the market is 100 ticks. Just for argument's sake, 100 ticks. The market's come down steadily. We're at now we're at a support level from the prior day. That's a decent support level. It's come down 105 ticks. It's at lunchtime. You know, you see how I'm adding layers of things as if you know if you're a trader, these are the kind of things that indicate potentially a reversal. We've got the full range of the day, the average expected range of the day. There's no external catalyst here. There's a big support level coming up from a long time ago. It's lunchtime, meaning there's not many participants involved in it. The odds of it moving off that level at some point are pretty pretty good. The chances of that going much lower are pretty slim, just based on the market conditions at the time, time of day, that support, the fact that support's held, all these kind of things. So 
that no longer becomes, the chance of that going lower is no, is no longer 50-50. The fact, the chance of that being lower than that, or we're, or we're assuming that. Again, we don't know this. If it was a pure mathematical game, we could just hammer, hammer it completely like the casinos do, and you'd just be making rolling in money. You have to take some assumptions here, and sometimes your assumptions are wrong, which is why trading is so challenging. But we assume that this point in time, it's not a 50-50 trade that. It becomes a little bit more of an expectancy. Now, maybe it becomes 60-40, maybe it becomes 70-30. The chances of it coming off that low are maybe quite high. This then comes into play and we say, okay, well, the chance of it moving three times versus one time, uh, that is also probably 50-50 because the chance of it coming off here is going to be you know, 70%. So the chance of it going up three times that, 30 ticks versus our 10 under that key level, may well be 50-50, we're gonna take the trade. So you can see how we start to frame the trade based on probability of success and the risk and water ratio. Let's look at another extreme example. Let's say we've had, um, this is not an extreme example, this is a genuine everyday example in reality, a good drive off the open. We've had some good news overnight, the market has gapped up, up it goes, and we've got a good drive off the open, and we start to flag a nice tight high flag here on with good volume, loads of things. We haven't done the average expected range for the day yet, or for, or anything unusual. We've just driven hard, and we're very aggressive, and we've kind of sat here. The odds of that price moving up again with all the right things, all the right background are way more than 50%. The chance of that working are probably gonna be 70%, 75%, if not 80%, if not even higher under the right conditions. You know, when the market's in a brutal bear market, and we're seeing this in the morning after more bad news, the chance of it pinging off that and going higher is so slim. So you gotta to, got to put the whole framework in place while you're doing it. Oh, lost a little uh, thing, but let's imagine this now. Okay, so we can say, right, listen, 10 tick stop, 10 tick target, that is a 70% chance working. We can use one-to-one -one because we're using the whole formula and saying, listen, we've seen this work so many times before in the right conditions, this is more than likely gonna continue. And so we can use one-to-one -one risk reward ratio quite comfortably because we know the probability of success is higher. And then flip side, if the probability of success is very low, but the risk reward ratio is very high, we can do that. Let's look at an example there because these are the kind of things that I like to do as well. So. Let's say, for example, um, think trying to think of a good one here. Um, let's say, here's, here's a good one. Let's say we've just come out after data and we've done pinging around like this. But after data, we're expecting actually that there will be a trend in place. So what we, um, we're expecting the trend to continue quite dramatically. Let's say we then take a trade here and we use a 20 tick stop. But we know that this thing could actually move 200 points in the day, 200 ticks in the day. Now, the chances of that working are probably going to be reasonably slim because it's ping-ponged around, it could go down lower, it could not. But we feel that we've got a little bit more of an edge because it's the end of the chop, uh, it's calming down a little bit, and we think that perhaps we're going to get a bit more removed. So we can use our 20 tick stop. Then we get our 10 to 1 risk-reward ratio because we're looking for 200 ticks, which is up there. But the probability of that working uh, it's probably quite low. Maybe it's 25%, maybe it's 20%, maybe you know one out of four of those work for us, maybe one out of 10 of those work for us. If one out of 10 work for us, then there's no point taking it because we're on a neutral expectancy. But if we can get higher than that, then we can start to do it. Now, yes, I understand and I appreciate here that I'm making a lot of assumptions, but you have to do that as a trader. You have to make these assumptions. You can have the data in front of you and you can say, listen, I know that, um, you know, one out of five times this exact setup works, but there are always different variables in it. So even if you do have the data there, you still have to take it with a pinch of salt and still have to be you know, a little bit discretionary with it. But the point is, is that if you do have that data, you say, listen, the average range of the day is X. I've noticed that we tie a reverse at this time during the day, or I've noticed that this pattern on the daily chart occurs quite frequently. Um, and my risk reward can be reasonable. I can have a reasonable risk reward. I can have a reasonable chance of success then things are gonna swing in my favor. If I don't have either of those, if I just have a high risk reward and the chance of success is low, then there's no point taking the trade because it's just a neutral expectancy. Same if we flip on the other side, we've got a high chance of success, but the risk reward ratio is skewed against us, then it's kind of not gonna work. And actually, very briefly, if you're into options, if you sell options, 
the chances of success are really high. You know, if you're selling options that you can go way, way out of the money options, you're selling them and you're getting 90% occurrences that you're right and you're getting, you know, some income in, but they're priced like that because 10% of the time you're going to take a massive hit and the hit will be 10 times, if not more, because they're priced obviously um, a little bit more than efficient because of the spread and everything. You're going to take a hit that's many multiples times, 10 times the amount that you make on each one. So you, know, you make 10, 10, 10, then you lose 100 times your stake. So you know, look at it in the options market, exactly the same kind of thing. And if we extrapolate that into pure trading, the underlying, it's, it's, it, it's identical. You know, we've got to understand the risk reward ratio versus the trade expectancy. Use that kind of payoff, that trade off between the two. Find that sweet spot. Find where we think we've got more of a positive trade expectancy and we can have a decent risk reward ratio as well, logically, rather than just arbitrary. And then we can perhaps make some good money out of it.